Well, male teachers are so rare, especially in primary school, that they've been branded an endangered species. 30% of primary school teachers in 1980 were men. That number is now 18%. And Matt Brophy is among them. He is the host of the podcast, The Holidays Are Good. That's all about the positivity surrounding being a male teacher. And Matt is on our panel. It's yes. great to see you. Yeah. Um, I was so surprised to learn that even though you've been teaching for 18 years, when you were at university, there were very few men in your class. How many were there? There was uh, <laughs> roughly 40 when the course first started. Out of? Out of probably 600 people. Wow. At wow. uh, University yeah. of Western Sydney at Nepean there, which is now, uh, oh, it was UWS back then. Yep. There was just a lot of blokes there and we were trying to really establish, establish those relationships quickly because we knew that we were the minority. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure that we had each other's back well, and support each other. See how I'm why? sitting up straight? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to as well. So why, why has it tanked? What are men either afraid of or what better opportunities did they think they've mm. got? It, has mm. it got anything to do with the environment of teaching girls especially and uh, that, that whole aspect mm. of uh, sexual activity? Look, it's a, it's a great question, actually. It's, it's something where, when I was uh, first starting my career, I was taught very quickly that we'll have challenges, definitely. And like the what? Oh, the, just the perception of being a male primary school teacher, you'll get a lot of judgment. Being my size, I'm six foot five and 115 kilos now. I wasn't 115 kilos back then. But you, people were almost taken aback that you were wanting to do that type of job as a, as a career. That perhaps you were a predator? What, well, what, I know, just that when, when you're younger, obviously, you, you act a certain way, mm. and the way that you're viewed in public is completely different to your personal, uh, your, sorry, your professional career, and when they find out that I was a teacher, they, they were quite surprised. So uh, I'll give you an example. When I used to play for the Norwest Jets uh, AFL team, once they found out I was a school teacher, they were gobsmacked. They, they couldn't believe it because mm. there's... People find it very hard to believe that there's the professional side and then the side outside the classroom. Yeah. So is it, is it not good enough or something? Well, yeah, is it a more masculine, I mean, a, a less masculine mm. career? My, one of my early principals, Roy McGuinness, said to the whole staff that it's a vocation, so you're here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like teaching at a Catholic school, it's a very religious aspect that you're, you're here for a reason. God put you here for a reason. So. Uh, one way or another, it was my vocation to be a teacher. So, knowing that, I, uh, I've had some challenges. So, instance? Oh, uh, just I've only had one death threat. Not, not ideal. From no. Oh, from an ex-student. Oh. Just because of um, things. As a teacher, you have to be honest with your students. You have to prepare them for life outside of school. You have to prepare them for adulthood. And this young fella didn't really want to take the advice that was given. And then uh, a few well, years after I taught him, he came back and threats were made. Look, I'm, wow. I'm, a, I'm OK, I'm still alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, But, I mean, given the fact the teaching environment we do know is challenging because mm. of, uh, you know, home life is not ideal. But let's just face it, men teaching girls in school, there is a big pushback there. How do you overcome that? How important is it for the boys there and the girls to have a male teacher? In some schools I've taught at in my career, I might be the only male influence that this child has. So I have to yeah. take a lot of roles on. Uh, mentor, uncle figure, father figure. Now I'm getting older, grandfather figure. But <laughs> it's, it's just something that you either are a teacher or you, or you aren't. And you have to be very tolerant and accepting of all, all the kids. And it's, it's something that as you develop, you do develop your skills and you get a lot of personal development to prepare for those things, but I just treat my kids like they're just human beings. That's the hard mm. part, though, because, see, I wanted to be a teacher mm. uh, and I was going to be an art teacher or a music teacher because I thought, well, the holidays are good, like your podcast yeah. is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the holidays are good yeah. and you get to sort of do what you want to do, which is art or music, yeah. uh, and a lot of people talk me out of it. So how do we get more guys mm. and more men involved? Well, in... Does there need to be gender quotas? There have been calls for gender quotas uh, in look, Parliament. Um, Seeing though I'm sort of speaking for a lot of the male teachers out here, I spoke to my friends that, who are also teachers to get their opinion on the questions. And we came to the unanimous decision. We want the best teachers available. 
male or female regardless. Yeah. Yeah. There's no point having a quota system for these teachers because it just because you're a man doesn't necessarily mean you'd be a good teacher. That's right. Mm. Or on the flip side, just because you're a woman doesn't necessarily mean True. you're going to be a good teacher either. I don't think it's going to work. But well, we did we did look up in my school when we were going to school. You know, uh, primary school it was as co-ed, and mm -hmm. we had men and women teachers. High school it was a boys' school, Ramwick Boys High, mm. and we used to be scared of some teachers, and other ones were fantastic mentors because yeah. they go, "Listen, you can do that." Just give it another go. You've worked it out. Blah, blah. You know, there was ones that you kind of go, well, he actually believes in me. And I think that mm. I think there, it, it, there's good teachers and there's not so good teachers, men or women. Matt, can That's we just it. ask the final question? Did you have a, a particular teacher at school who inspired you to, to take definitely, this Definitely, definitely. Uh, my, I had two teachers growing up which really led me to the path of teaching. Uh, my year two teacher, Mrs. Rosensky, and my year five teacher, Ms. Kuda. And yeah. they just made... Uh, teaching fun yeah. and they made uh, being at school a great experience yeah. and as I um, are teaching now I'm trying to make those six hours a day as fun as possible. Absolutely. They still need to learn obviously. Yeah. They still need to be told if they're doing something wrong. Mm. You just have to be very careful how you word it nowadays yeah. but I, I'm just trying to make it so positive. A posit as positive as I possibly can and mm. to make sure that they know that I've always got their back 100%. That's fantastic. Oh, that's great. Matt's podcast, The Holidays Are Good, can be downloaded at iTunes. Matt Brophy, we need more of you. Yeah. Yeah. Right around yeah. 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 Matt I'm going to become a teacher. I'm going to become a teacher. A senior teacher. Some parents out there, holidays, think about it. Holidays yeah. 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 Now, up next, it's back to Angela Bishop with our Royal Correspondent.